Hi everyone. So it's been a while that I filmed a Q&A. It seems during the Christmas season I just don't get around to it. I apologize for it. And being that I fell behind, I do have more questions. So let's get right into them. And MB kindly went through the videos and got the questions for me. Uh, the first video is the cottage landscape, which that's been a while. Last fall, basically, we did the landscaping here at the cottages. And in case you're wondering where I'm sitting, I'm in Sparrow's Nest. And it's so good to be over here again. I really miss the cottages. Like we were over here a lot this past summer, of course, you know, doing work here. And now I don't really come over here very much. Um, so I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, we've been blessed with bookings. Thank you guys for staying here. I'm pretty sure some of you that are watching probably stayed here. Um, I appreciate all the kind messages in the little notebook that you leave. That's always my highlight to read those. Um, it's been so much fun to have a place like this. I can't even put it in words. Definitely looking forward to the spring and summer and fall months too with these. Uh, people can enjoy the outdoors more. Uh, but it's cozy in here too and it's been so much fun. But sorry, kind of went off on a bunny trail there. So getting back to the questions. And if my answers are a bit short sometimes, it's not that I'm impatient with the question or anything. I just have a lot of them, so I want to get through them in an orderly fashion. Uh, the first one here is Kay Simpson asking, how far are the cottages from your home? Are they within view? They are not within view. We're about 15 minutes away. Jesse Slay says, just wondering if you plan to build more cottages in the future. Uh, it would be fun, but at this point, I don't know that we will. Uh, this was a good experience, though. It's not that we, I mean, we wouldn't be afraid to do it again. Uh, my dream, honestly, would be probably the next thing I'd want to do along this line would be to buy an old, rundown house that nobody wants and redo it and then rent it out. I think that would be so much fun. Definitely on my bucket list, but I don't know will it ever happen or not. Peter White says, any plans to put in a swimming pool? We've talked about it. Um, as you guys know, we plan to have an orchard kind of out that way, and we've talked about maybe having little gardens and a pavilion and a swimming pool. Uh, but I realize a swimming pool is a whole nother thing to take care of, so we'd really have to think that one over. But I think it would be really nice for the guests during the summertime, but we'll see. Melody Melody says, when you edge the beds and didn't remove the clumps of grass, will it not grow back in the bed? I have always removed it thinking I had to, and it is a pain at getting rid of all the roots. Um, I have always just put my clumps back in because I kind of like the look of a slightly raised bed, you know, in doing that and I usually turn them over, so I think that kind of kills the grass. So I've never really had major issues. Now I did notice, you know, looking out here, there are some little clumps of grass coming and it might be from that, what we put in there, like that edge. But I do have a spray, I don't even like to say that, but um, it's a little less harsh than your, can't even think of the name, Roundup would be, and some of those others, but um, it does you know, usually do the job of killing the grass, but I realize it's not something we wanna just keep doing all the time, but I think sometimes you have to do that initially, you know, just to get rid of uh, some of that stuff. And then I think with a thick layer of mulch, you know, that helps too with um, kind of suffocating the grass so it can't grow. Uh, so we'll see how it goes, but uh, so far that's always kind of worked for me to leave the clumps in the, the flower beds. And the bottom comment from this video is Trust Claire Wheezy saying, please, please stop starting with, hi guys, do I do that? I probably do. Not even sure how I start my videos. Hi everyone, hi everyone, hi everyone, hi everyone, hi everyone, hi YouTube friends, hi guys. The next questions are from the q and I had done last fall. Uh, Kathleen McCarthy says, I love your content, thank you. Where can I find the video on the painted bathroom floor? I will link it down below in the description box. Pat Key says, how does it feel to have so many followers? Honestly guys, it feels surreal. I sometimes still can't believe it. I mean, when I had a couple of hundred followers, I didn't really understand, so of course I still can't. But thank you, I consider all of you my friends. Uh, D Feek says, can you close the comment section maybe just long enough to frustrate the scammer? That is actually a good idea, although I'd miss you guys' comments. Um, I think we just have to be aware of you know, who is legit or not, and I think most of you guys probably are. Um, if somebody posts down below in the comment section you know, over and over again and pretends to be me, it's not me. Like I never, I hardly even post in the comment section and I would never reach out through a comment section to tell you guys you won something. I guess we went over all of that in the last Q&A, but always just be really cautious with things like that. And the bottom comment from that video is TD saying, your cottages are overpriced for the area, nearly $300 a night. 
Uh, Millersburg has some attractions, but everything closes at five and nothing is open Sundays. Well, if everything closes at five, you can spend more time here, right? Uh, we had kind of go, gone over that before, I think, with the pricing. We just kind of went by what other cottages and cabins in the area are priced at. But honestly, I think with you know what's included here, I think that's probably about right. Uh, we do have a special coming up here in February, and by the time you see this video, you probably know about that. So in case you missed it, I had a Valentine's Day video uh, the other day, and uh, we're having a special during the month of February. The next questions are from that entertainment center makeover that I had done. First one here is Sherry saying, how do you come up with these ideas on what to make? Your sense of design is really great. I don't think I could envision what you do by just looking at a piece of furniture and making it happen. Uh, well, it sometimes takes a little time to kind of envision and maybe flip the thing around or cut something off in your mind. Like, And it doesn't always turn out the way you envision too. but. Um, that was a really fun piece to do because it was a, you know, really an outdated entertainment center, big and heavy, and it was just kind of fun to cut that thing down and create two nice pieces of furniture. I actually still have some doors and shelves left over from that piece. I always thought I'd make some signs or do something with that too. I just like the idea of trying to, you know, make something new or turn something beautiful again and then kind of using up everything that was included too. And um, it was just a lot of fun. I guess we all have our different interests and that is one of my interests, like I love doing that, so obviously I'll probably mo have more of the vision for it than maybe some would, but I'm sure uh, you have some areas where you excel that I couldn't even come close to, so I guess we all have our different talents. Uh, Rhonda says, this is absolutely gorgeous, you did such a wonderful job restore redoing that piece, thank you. Uh, do you use chalk paint, flat paint, or what kind of paint do you use? I'm trying to think what I used on that. I think I just used my satin. I often go for the satin sheen because I feel that's what is easy to clean and it's not shiny to look at. It's just that just right. And I think eggshell is kind of that way too. Now sometimes I'll use flat because I lean more towards the, the dull uh, finish than the, the shiny one, of course. But um, I don't think I had used wax on that piece either, but sometimes I'll apply the Annie Sloan Clear Wax and that is also a nice matte, has a nice matte finish. But for those pieces, both of them, I believe I just used a regular satin sheen paint. Uh, next question here is, why did you opt out of painting the legs of the buffet? I'm just curious. Um, I just like that look. I'm kind of into that right now, the two-tone, maybe mixing a natural wood with white. Always like that combination. Throw in a green plant with that. I think that's a really pretty combination to me. Uh, Dawn Westerbeck says, I literally clapped my hands and smiled when she said she painted it green. It's just what I wanted. Uh, may I ask who edited this video? It was so good. Well, thank you for that, both of those compliments. But yeah, I love the color green too, and I do all of my editing. Uh, Lynn Neville says, I'm just curious how long did these two pieces take? I would say I spent a few days. It's been a while, so I have to kind of think back, but uh, maybe it could have been done in a whole day, but often, you know, I have other things going on. I can't just keep working on the same thing all day long. Uh, Julie Johnson says, does your kitty ever rub up against any wet painted pieces? I always think about that when they're around, but so far I can't remember that's ever happened. I know one of them did have some paint maybe on their paw one time, but I think they just stepped, you know, onto something like a paint can lid or something. I don't think it was a piece of furniture where I had to kind of fix it or anything, so. So far, so good on that. Bottom comment from that video is Kate Wade saying, reveal is excruciatingly long and music is sad. I can't remember what music I used, but I'll try to remember not to put sad music in the reveal. It should be happy, right? And then as far as the ending being kind of long, trust me, I'm sure it probably was. I'm kind of a sucker for, like, I love to take final pictures. That's probably one of my favorite things to do, especially if the lighting is nice. Sometimes it's not as fun if the lighting isn't very good, but um, I just feel then I have to kind of share all of the different angles and pictures and I should realize it's probably not everybody's thing, but I guess for me it kind of is and then they tend to get kind of long. The next questions are from the speed cleaning video. Uh, the first question here is, do you have any plans to remodel your kitchen? Uh, yes, absolutely. Every time I work in the kitchen I think about that. Uh, I always wonder if you guys can see all of the flaws in the videos or not. Um, I'm always kind of embarrassed because I know it's definitely in need of a remodel, but at this point, there's just other things that kind of need our attention first, I guess, but hopefully someday. Uh, Sue is asking, do you have a link for the dusting mitt? 
Uh, yeah, usually I have a Norwex link down below in the description box. So if you click on that, it should take you to their site where you could purchase a dusting mitt if you want to. Uh, Mountain Girl says, is that contact paper on your island? Uh, no, it's actually painted. Um, it's just a plain pine top and I painted it to kind of look like marble years ago. Again, parts are peeling off and should be replaced. And the bottom comment from that video is Patsy Williams saying, wasting water. Um, I can't remember what I was doing in that video, so I probably shouldn't even address it, but possibly maybe I was wasting water. I try to turn it off if I'm not using it, but uh, sometimes I find myself, if I'm rinsing my dishes, to kind of have it running a little at least. Our next questions are from the winter porch decor video. The first one here is, question, what did you put in your pots and crocks before adding your greens to prevent the greens from blowing out in the winter? I'm trying to think what I, again, this is kind of the thing with doing Q and A's where you kind of have to think what you did in the video, but yeah, I did fix some pots where I stuck some greens in the potting soil. I think I just put potting soil in there to make them stick. And in the meantime, you know, everything froze. We've had some really cold weather, which right now it's not cold outside. It's actually uh, weirdly warm. We had 54 degrees this morning, but we had a spell there where it was really cold and everything kind of holds together in those pots, uh, possibly because it is frozen maybe still. And even if it wasn't, I think that potting soil would hold things together too. Uh, Linda Daly says, I was just wondering if that was a boxwood shrub in the pot on your porch and does it last or does it last okay all winter? I've been wanting to do something like that in my planters. Um, I do have live shrubs on the porch, including boxwood. And yes, they do fine during the winter for me. Uh, now I usually keep them watered before the potting soil freezes, but I think after it's frozen, you really don't have to do that. Or that's what Marlene says. She's always a plant expert, uh, but so far that's kind of worked. And then if it does thaw, like right now we do have a thaw going on, so I'm not sure I should probably check those pots, make sure they're still you know, moist. Uh, Carolyn Hunter says, how long will the evergreen clippings last? Uh, definitely longer than if, if they're in your house. I've noticed, you know, our house is really dry too, but uh, my live clippings just don't last very long. But on the porch, I'd say all winter they should be okay. And the bottom comment here is not to be rude. Well, I appreciate that, but I think your porch and railings need a paint. I know, I'm always embarrassed how they look in my videos. I guess you guys see we don't get to everything. Uh, things are just crazy often at our place. I'm not sure how I could somehow fix that. Like, do I need to hire more people? Probably, but I don't really want to. Uh, the next questions are from the Christmas products video, which I had shared some uh, Etsy products we have over Christmas. Uh, Dawn says, are the wooden cutouts food safe? Uh, I, I mean, I'm usually not that picky with if something is stained and it's dried and cured, I would probably put some food on, maybe not something that would soak in and then you'd kind of eat that or you'd get stains on your board, but uh, those little cutouts, you're probably referring to like the, the trees and the gingerbread men, we didn't really put a like a uh, cutting board type oil on there. I wasn't thinking food, I guess, when I made them, but you could always put that on and I think that would kind of repel your any moisture from food. Uh, but again, that would be, just because I would do it doesn't mean that it's safe, I guess. So don't, maybe not follow my advice on that, but just do your own research. But it was stained using an oil-based stain, which is a pretty strong smelling you know, chemical. Uh, but I always feel, again, like even this tabletop here, that was also stained with an oil-based stain, but I did put the polyacrylic over it and um, that definitely should have sealed it off, I guess. But. Uh, just kind of hard to know, I guess, just do your own research on that. Erica says, I was wondering if you send your products overseas. Yes, all the time. In fact, we did a year-end um, kind of analysis of the Etsy shop, trying to think how many different countries, I shouldn't be saying this without knowing, but I think it was over 20, maybe even more, different countries that we have sent products to. I couldn't believe it. It's uh, pretty far out, but I guess with, you know, online, anybody has access to your things, obviously. And the bottom comment here is, MB put down bottom comment, LOL, it might not actually be mean, not sure. So let's see what it says. Uh, O-Rag says, thank you for the title of your video. I didn't watch it. Well, that's why I title them, and I try not to uh, be, you know, deceiving when I do that. Like, I, I put down products video, so you guys know if you're not interested in purchasing any Etsy shop products, don't even watch it. Although I always think people could get ideas, you know, if you want to make your own little gingerbread men or trees or candles or whatever all was on there. Um, it could still be inspiring, but don't feel the need to watch if you don't want to. I'm not offended in the least. 
trust me I don't watch the video unless it actually unless I actually want to and here she has one more comment she just labeled it idea see what it says here uh, Chrissy says does anyone know if you can get gift cards to Mary's shop that would be a good idea we should definitely do that I should check into that how you can do that with Etsy or if you can pretty sure you probably can I'd imagine and I think the last video for the November videos is the living room Christmas decor video. Uh, the first one here is Bird Rock Cabins saying, have you ever thought about changing your living room curtains to a white linen or bleach drop cloth material and hanging them closer to the ceiling? Um, I just did that throughout my cottage and it really made my rooms look larger. Just a suggestion. Keep creating. Your work and ideas are amazing. Well, thank you and I love that idea. Thank you for that. I have thought about that because I know here in the cottages any curtains that I hung, which in the bedroom is the only place I think, uh, we hung them up high and it really just gives an air of like you walk in there, which we do have 10 foot ceilings in here, that helps too, but um, it just, it makes it even seem larger than it actually is. So um, I have had the curtains in our living room that are in there now for years, like I think probably 12 years or so. So it definitely, they should be changed. And I am really thinking about a living room makeover. I've talked about this before, like we need new furniture in the living room, so that would probably be the time to do it. Um, who knows, maybe this winter sometime. Uh, one last says, can you please share what type of electric sanders you use for your furniture? We go through a lot of sanders. We use the little mouth sanders. I think the brand is either Black & Decker or um, it's not a really pricey sander. I guess that's probably why we go through a lot, but I like them, like I like the size of them and how they work, uh, while they work, and it's just worth it for us to spend, you know, $30 on a new one every couple months. But yeah, we really like those. And I'll leave a link down below in the description box of the exact one. Not quite sure of the brand, but uh, we really like them. Uh, Tanya Williams says, where did you get the love, love seat cover? Uh, from Amazon, and I'll try to link that also down below in the description box. Next question here is, how do you start an Etsy shop? Well, there's all kinds of videos out there uh, where people talk about doing that. Um, I don't feel that I'm really the right person to just, you know, share on how to start an Etsy shop. That's not quite my thing, even though I have a shop, but um, I had maybe one video where I talked about kind of my experience with my journey as far as, you know, with the Etsy shop, but I didn't really have a tutorial or anything on how to start one. So I definitely advise you to just search that on YouTube and you'll find some good ones on there. That's how I started. Uh, the bottom comment here is Linda saying, you look so thin, anything wrong? Uh, no, I don't think, I feel fine. <laughs> And moving into the December videos, the first one here is a vintage sled idea video. Uh, first question is Joanne Thompson saying, what type of a nail gun do you use? I'll link one down below in the description box. So this video will have lots of tools down below if you want some good tools to work with, but I'm sure your local Lowe's would have them too, just small uh, nailers. I love those, they're just easy to, to handle. Uh, Grace Castor says, did you use a laser printer or an inkjet? I used an inkjet, that's all I have. Uh, Debbie says, your project is beautiful, thank you. Would it be possible, though, to lower the music when you speak? I try to do that, but I know I miss it sometimes. That probably was a video that I uh, accidentally had it up too high, but um, it's just with editing, I can't really even explain it, but sometimes it's just easier to kind of leave the music in and just lower it whenever I speak, but sometimes I forget to do that or don't lower it enough, and that's probably what happened, I apologize. Uh, the bottom comment is a famous one saying, Mary, can you do any videos without selling something? I mean, a couple seconds in and you're selling the shirt, come on. Uh, I love to sell things. I'm probably not gonna quit doing that. Like, I love the idea of making, creating things and getting it into people's homes to just make it all cozy and pretty. And I'm trying to think that video, I had a shirt, we had a few left over from the year before, and I think I had mentioned that it was a Christmas shirt in case anybody wanted one. And I guess, I don't know, I probably won't stop doing that. I don't do it in every video though, honestly, so you probably don't watch every video, but I do it for the most part because we usually have something new going on that I wanna talk about. Uh, the next video is the, maybe the Christmas Dollar Tree one here. I'm not sure am I doing these in the correct order. I'll do my best here, but uh, the first question here is, I live in California and our dollar stores are now $1.25 and some things just aren't the value they once were. Um, did your dollar stores raise their prices yet? Not that I saw, I mean, I did notice like the picture frames, I think are $1.25 and maybe some of the other stuff is too, that like more than I noticed, but I guess with anything, you know, I don't know, I guess having 
a business myself where I sell things, I realize like you, you have to make money too. Like you can't, if everything else goes up for you, like you'll have to adjust that price. But it's still kind of sad. It, it was always fun, you know, going into a Dollar Tree and thinking everything's a dollar in there, right? Like we like that, but it's the times we live in, I guess. Uh, NW says, so what was the white stuff you put on the green foam wreath? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, those were those disposable little Swiffer or duster things that you put on a stick and kind of dust your furniture with. Uh, Lisa Barefoot says, are you going to decorate your Airbnb cottages for Christmas? I ended up not doing that. I was going to at one point, but I guess with honestly just with everything we had put in here already and all the money we had spent, I was just kind of ready to just leave them the way they are and maybe another year I'll get around to doing it. And the bottom comment here is, I would rather see you make Christmas decor that you would actually use than Dollar Tree items that everyone else on YouTube is making. It's sad to see someone who started out flipping and creating such wonderful and useful things has fallen into these types of videos. Please go back to being unique instead of becoming a cookie cutter YouTuber. Your channel grew on you and your talents, not from being a copycatter. I don't think I copied anything in that video. Like all of that stuff was my own. I can't remember even, I don't really watch a lot of YouTubers or decorating stuff on YouTube, so I don't even know what all is out there, but um, if, it, if there's a lot of that out there, it's not, you know, I didn't know about it, but I like the challenge of just taking something that doesn't cost a lot and turning it into something beautiful. That's why I did it. Uh, the next questions are from the Christmas Kitchen Decor video. First one here is, where do you store your decor pieces when you put out your seasonal pieces? I'd appreciate some suggestions. I could probably get some suggestions from you guys. I feel I'm not very organized in that area. Um, I have totes and boxes, you know, upstairs that I put everything in. Like if I, I'm about to put, take down the Christmas decorations, so I, anything I want to hang on to, of course, I put in totes and boxes, which most of the time I do, all of it. But sometimes I have something where I'm like, oh, I probably won't use this again, and I'll, you know, donate it to a thrift store. But I'm, yeah, I always feel I'm not organized the best with that, but for me, I do have separate containers, you know, totes and boxes that I have all of my Christmas decor, and then I have a room downstairs with shelves that I store some of my other seasonal things or just stuff that I don't use, you know, have out all the time, but I still want to hang on to, but I should definitely do some organizing in that area. Uh, Jennifer says, I'm curious, do you have any big chain stores where you live? Not close by, I mean, the closest one is probably Walmart, which is 20 minutes away. And then as far as, you know, Target, uh, Meyer, Whole Foods, uh, we would need to go further for that, especially Whole Foods. I wish there was one close by. Uh, we would need to go to Columbus or Cleveland for that. Uh, the bottom comment here is, please do not show chickens that you plan on butchering. Not all of us enjoy that type of content. I think I mentioned that in a video sometime. I'm not sure, was it? Yeah, it was probably that video because I think I had showed a whole chicken, uh, how I make a whole chicken. And I had mentioned how I love to you know, dress chickens or butcher chickens. I had learned that as a young girl and I miss it sometimes. I wonder if I could still do it. I feel I could. I haven't done it recently, but um, yeah, I had debated too, like would that be something to show in a video or not? Or would it be helpful? Like I wouldn't show the process of actually killing the chicken because I don't even like that process either. But of course, you know, you have to do that to be able to, to eat it, right? Uh, kitchen tablescape video. Uh, Carol says, what is the name of the tool you were using to cut down the small tree? One of the best tools ever. It's a hacksaw or a, a sawzall, you can call it too. A Milwaukee brand is what we have, but there's other brands out there too, I'm sure. But I'll try to link one down below in the description box. So. There's another tool for you to check out. Uh, Gail Allen says, will you be preparing all the food? She's probably asking about the Christmas get together we had. We had John's family for Christmas. We had actually rented our church because it's a rather large group. But I did get most of the food catered. Um, I felt like I was kind of cheating in doing that because some years I would definitely attempt to make it myself. Um, Ann says, fake greenery in the big jar. Couldn't you use real? I thought about using real greenery. I kind of wondered how that would work. I guess in my mind I thought it would probably float even more than the fake, but I kind of wonder though because I think it was kind of hard to keep that fake stuff tucked down in there where it didn't just float to the top. Um, I should have tried with the reel. That would have looked really pretty. The bottom comment here is, it's pretty, but I couldn't justify chopping a tree for a tablescape. That was hard for me to do too, because I'm a, I love trees. Like I felt kind of bad chopping down that tree. But at the same time, I think I have mentioned this in the video too, uh, it's an area down by our pond where lots of those little skinny trees are growing to the point where there's actually too many and sometimes they die off, like they, they get kind of overcrowded. So I thought maybe I'm doing a favor to the ones surrounding it if I take it down. So I told myself. 
uh, the gift jar ideas video. Uh, Deborah says that blue paint you use to paint those jars, that's the color I've been looking for to paint my bedroom. I wonder how hard that would be to match up for a gallon. Um, I'm trying to think what paint I used on that. I think I used one of those craft paints, right? And did I mix some white in it or not? Like right now I can't even remember. Um, I may not have. I think I just used the actual color. But yeah, you could totally probably go to Walmart and buy that paint and just get a drop or just get them to match it at the hardware. Uh, Linda says, how do you get the wax and any scents out of the utensils and pans that you use? Um, I didn't think about the utensils, but I did have a hard time with that pan that I melted the wax in. And then I ended up putting it in the freezer. I remember somebody once told me that. And after I, you know, it froze, I took it out and just kind of popped it out. I think that kind of worked the best. But I still had to, even with doing that, there was still some stuck on the side that I had to kind of try to rinse off with really hot water and soap. But I, yeah, I was, it's kind of a challenge to do that. I can't believe I actually kind of faded away there because we've had such cloudy weather here in Ohio again. I never want to complain if I have too much lighting. Like it's, uh, it's a blessing to just even, the sun's not out, but it's at least, you know, not quite as dark as it was. A uh, bottom comment is I'm the number one like. Well, thank you for that like. I appreciate it. Uh, the next questions are from the thrifting video. Amy Hoff says, can the transfers be used on outdoor projects? Um, I should ask Cheryl, the lady that I get the transfers from, for sure, but I imagine you probably could. Like, I think I'd dare to do that, but I would definitely seal them, possibly even with, like, an oil-based sealer, uh, or a polycrylic would probably work, too. Barb B says, how are the new rentals? Uh, they are doing great. We feel really blessed. Again, thank you, guys, for booking. It's so much fun to have people here. Um, we, of course, don't manage the properties. We have property managers. I've talked about this before, um, Dustin and Nicole. They do a great job with them. But even though we don't take care of the bookings, I always know like who's staying here, and I always just pray everybody enjoys it and feels peace when they're here. Um, that's my wish for the, both cottages. Uh, Patty says, this is off subject, but did you ever hike Mount Katahdin? Would love to see any footage if you have some. Uh, we actually did. It was probably, we've done a lot of hiking. That was probably our best hike ever. Like it was just amazing. Uh, you of course had to sign in and or register, you know, before going on the hike. It's a pretty strenuous hike, but it was so much fun. I do have some footage and it's funny you mentioned this because I think one of my next videos is going to be, have to do with that hike. There's more to it, but I'll definitely put some footage in there of it. Uh, we did that this past September with uh, my sister and her husband, and we just, yeah, it was an awesome time. I'd definitely do it again. Uh, Maria says, I wonder if using a shade of that blue that's in the bird cloth would have carried the two pieces closer together. Not criticism, but just wondering if you thought the same before you made the choice. I did. It's funny that you mentioned that. I actually uh, went downstairs. I used to have a color of paint that was about that color. It was called Nan Nantucket Blue, and I opened my can and it was dried up. Like, I couldn't use it, but... I think that would have been perfect. But I did notice the color that they turned out to be was kind of matched some of the gray that was in there with the birds, not the main blue, but some of the little gray streaks or whatever. And so I thought it kind of, it, it was okay, but I think too, like blue would have even looked better. Uh, the bottom comment here is Lynn Johnson saying, it's gross, you left it on and covered it up instead of just taking the gross out of it. Hopefully no bed bugs, but you didn't even check. Hmm, I don't understand how some people think the bird fabric is adorable. Love your channel, the cute things you do. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I had talked about how it's always kind of gross to redo like upholster things because you kind of never know what's you know in there. Although it did have a tag on when I bought it, which I trust you know they were being honest, but it was clean. Like it had been checked for bed bugs and all that, so I wasn't worried about that. Uh, the last questions are from the Extreme House Makeover video. Uh, Melanie says, would love to hear the story of how you and John came to acquire your childhood home. You've probably shared before in a previous video, so if you could provide a link, that would be swell. Otherwise, sharing that story in the future would be lovely. I'll try to make it quick here, just to, you know, I could probably talk a while about this, but we had actually lived in a new house at the time. We had built our own house. Well, we had gotten people to build it for us, but um, designed it ourselves and you know had this new house and then this opportunity came up to get my childhood home and uh, we just could not turn it down even though we lived in a brand new house uh, we have not regretted it since uh, we love it back there and just yeah so many memories uh, there's lots to maintain and you know it's it was kind of that age like the home was at that age where it could use some you know remodeling my parents had done some but we ended up doing a little bit too and still want to in the future 
uh, but it's just been a lot of fun. We really like it back there. Uh, Sheila asked, you had mentioned at the beginning that the house was, or the home was built as an Amish home. Did you have to put electric in the home or was that built in with it? Uh, we had to add that after we you know, weren't Amish anymore. We added the electric and that's always a kind of a hassle you could say to do like it's not as easy of course you know doing it at that stage than it would have been you know doing it when it was being built or while it was being built but uh, my dad's an electrician he did all of it he's really good with that sort of thing but things are still not quite like if you build something new you'd have probably more outlets and different you know it's, it's just hard to do once the house is actually finished like it's, you can't just have outlets in every corner and but we were just thankful for even one, you know, because we weren't used to having that, so not complaining. And the bottom comment from that video is Carolyn asking, where did your mom and dad go? They actually built a little house up the woods from us. They lived there for a number of years, and then they actually ended up moving about 15 minutes away, uh, a place where they could just spread out a little bit more. And trust me, we didn't push them out of the home that we're in now. Like, they wanted us to live there, and it's just a nice setup now. Like, we really like how it is. Although we miss them, like, we really enjoyed having them, you know, close by. But at least it's not, you know, far away. We still see them all the time. So that's all the questions. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today here in the Sparrow's Nest. Um, I actually have some filming I want to do in both of the cottages for a video that I'm working on. So that's why I'm here to begin with. But... I trust your day is going great. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.